Look at all this picky stuff I've got for you. Look at it, look at it. It's my favorite month and I'm gonna read the stuff that makes me stay awake all night. And then lovely wife Helen's gonna have to escort me to the bathroom because that's how I roll. Let's talk about the spooky books. It's Halloween month and this is the content that you asked for. Hi guys, it's Leanne and I am here today to talk to you about creepy books. I haven't made a TBR for myself, a solid TBR for myself, since March. And let me just once again emphasise, if you have not read a lot in 2020, it's okay, because it's a pandemic. There's a Cheeto in the White House. There's a Tory in Downing Street. And everything's just a little bit shit. So don't beat yourself up, because I'm not beating myself up. We're all discovering new coping methods right now. That little PSA aside, last month I did actually set myself a TBR just to see if I could stick to it, to see if I'd eased my way back in. And I am pleased to say that I completed most of the things on that TBR. So I felt safer this month in my month, the month of all spookiness, to actually make a proper stack. And I did that in preparation for this month, because this month I am taking part, as you will have seen from the title, in Book Budgetathon, because this year it's taking place over the whole of October, all of October, and it's horror movie themed, so obviously it was made for me. And you know, what better way to throw yourself back into making TBRs than with a readathon and with a bloody? Because holding me accountable this month is my lovely podcast partner in crime, Kirsty. And yes, there will be podcasts again, guys. I promise. It's just that 2020 has sucked. But you guys know that I am an overachiever. And I didn't just decide that I was going to set myself a TBR to cover most of the prompts. I decided to do all of the prompts. There are 12 individual books, no crossovers, 12 individual books on this TBR. I'm a little bit scared, but I'm also reminding myself that pre-pandemic, that was a perfectly easily achievable thing for me if I actually decided to read. So here we go. Once more into the ghostly, horrory breach we go. All of the prompts this year are centered around horror movie tropes, which as a consummate horror movie lover, I just, I love it. I'm so very happy. And I also love that every one of these prompts kind of turns the trope on its head. So the very first one that we have got is of course person of colour dies first. So instead we are reading a book written by or featuring a person of colour and the book that I've chosen for this one and have already started because it is the third of the month and you better bet that I have started already. There are a lot of books for me who has not been reading very many books in a month to read. The book that I have chosen does both of those things and it is Pet by Aquiki Emsi. Pet follows Jam and Jam is growing up in the city of Lucille which is a place with no more monsters. All of the monsters have been removed and put in jail and a few other things. And Jam makes it explicitly clear at the very beginning of this novel that the monsters are not the kinds of things that crawl out from under people's beds. They are people, people with suits and people with power who have been hurting the world. All around Lucille there are statues of the angels who fell in the fight against these monsters. They are people whose Twitter battle cries are engraved on their statues. Lucille is supposedly safe. But one day with an accidental drop of her blood on one of her mother's paintings, a creature crawls out of the paint calling itself Pet and it tells Jam that it's there to hunt one of the monsters and that her best friend is in dire trouble. And from the very little I know of Jam so far, I don't think she's going to allow anybody in her life to be in trouble without her having a say in it. I love the tone of this one. I am listening to it on audiobook right now and there's already so much representation in it. Not only is it absolutely filled with people of colour but there is disability representation and there is also queer representation in there and it's all just great and very very creepy. I'm not gonna lie, it's very very creepy. The next one is don't go back in the house. <laughs> don't! 
don't go back in the house. But again, flipping it completely on its head, this one is actually not a house setting. So something set outside of a haunted house, which you know for me was a little bit difficult because I do love my haunted house horrors. They are my favourite. And in an effort not to completely bog myself down with solely 500 page novels for an entire TBR, when it's the first time that I've done a TBR in a while, I picked a children's book. So for this one I have picked The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I feel like every time I show a book by Neil Gaiman at least 10 people are like, but Leanne, you don't like Neil Gaiman. Like I've somehow forgotten that I don't like Neil Gaiman's adult novels. You're right, I absolutely don't get along with Neil Gaiman's adult novels but I do love his non-fiction. I love the tone of the way that he writes and a lot of people have said that the Graveyard Book is absolutely nothing like his adult fiction and I've had it on audiobook for like quite a while now so I'm just gonna give it a try. All I know about the Graveyard Book and I'm trying to keep it this way is that it is about a boy called Bod or nicknamed Bod maybe who grows up in a graveyard. He is raised by ghosts and other creepy things that live there. But from what I understand Bod is not afraid of the ghosts and the things that raised him. He is afraid of the people who are alive and outside of the graveyard like you know the killer who killed his family in the first place. Which seems like a reasonable thing to be afraid of, don't you think? Next up is Jump Scare, something which I'm a big fan of slash not a very big fan of at all in horror movies. And it is a book which makes your heart beat faster. And for this I have chosen one that absolutely will make my heart beat faster because although I am very excited to read it, it also contains two of my biggest phobias ever ever in fiction and I semi don't know why I'm doing it to myself I'm gonna be perfectly honest except that apparently everybody says I'm gonna absolutely love it. This is The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling and it is a sci-fi horror novel about Gaia Price who has lied and cheated her way onto the mission that she is on in order to get a lot of money so that she can completely escape the life that she has been running from for a pretty long time. Enter Leanne's first phobia, Gaia is mapping mineral deposits on a new planet. So she is essentially in a spacesuit. She's enclosed completely in a spacesuit and she's going to be completely in the dark. I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but spacesuits and diving suits are... There's more though because Gaia just doesn't get to go on this mission and have everything go well. Of course not. Where, where would be the twist? The person who is on the surface, who is helping her while well, she's completely in the dark in this suit, is M. And M not only doesn't really like Gaia, but knows absolutely everything about her. She knows what she's running away from. And she is not afraid to control Gaia's body with the drugs, with oxygen and with other things to get her to do what it is that she wants her to do under the surface of this planet. Enter Leanne's second big phobic thing. Because where do minerals come from guys? Minerals come from caves. Essentially she's caving in a spacesuit with limited oxygen that she's not supplying or controlling herself. I will never understand anybody who goes caving. I will never understand you Bart and I don't really know why I'm doing this to myself but I'm also kind of excited about it which I think is the mood when you go into most horror movies let's be perfectly honest so Next up we have the trope of no coverage so we are looking for an isolated setting for this one. This book has been on and off my TBRs for the past two years I want to say and for some reason it always just seems to be at the end of a stack so I never ever get to it and it's annoying me because I'm very excited for it. This is Kill Creek. Kill Creek follows Sam who is a fairly prolific horror writer but like most people in the world Sam could do with a little bit of extra cash and so when he is asked to participate in a write all night session where a group of novelists are put into a really famously haunted house and locked in he's like sure because he doesn't believe anything that he writes in his books he has absolutely no belief about the supernatural 
whatsoever and he doesn't think anything bad is going to happen being locked into this house except for maybe being a bit cold and a bit annoyed by having to be around other humans. The problem is that Finch House really does have a reputation and nobody has actually spent the night there in a very very long time which means the house is very happy to have new visitors. So I want to point out at this stage that I do a weird thing with covers where I kind of see the image that I'm supposed to see on the cover and I'm just like I'm content with that and I move on with my life and so it took me a really really long time to spot these two creepy women hanging out on the top. <laughs> now I kind of don't want to look at it anymore because they're looking at me. No, we just go over there far away from me. Yes. Next up we have the final girl which by the way is one of my most hated tropes in all of horror anything and in thrillers and in mysteries and in crime I hate it. So I was very pleased to see it flipped on its head and instead us being asked to have a female author. For this one I have picked The House Next Door by Anne Rivers Siddons and apparently this one is incredibly incredibly disturbing because it is a very slow burn which I absolutely love in a ghost story. This is about the Walters who live in a suburb in Atlanta in Georgia and they have a very good sort of country club life, they have a very beautiful view, they have a stunning house and then right in front of them, right in the middle of their view on the hill next door, a new house starts to be built. They are absolutely dismayed because all of their privacy and all of their pretty views is now going away. But that's not really the problem. The problem is that there's something very wrong with the house next door and it can't possibly be haunted because of course nobody's died in it so that's how haunting works right? It's taken me a really long time to get my hands on this but I have been doggedly determined to do so because I absolutely love haunted house novels. They're my favourite type of horror novel. You guys know that. I love me a good ghost. And this one, whenever anybody talks about it, they say that they were just so disturbed that it stuck with them for months and months afterwards. This is not a kind of jump scare bang in the night. It's a very slow working its way into the, like the corners of your head novel. And I'm very, very excited for it. The next one is Splitting Up and I absolutely love the prompt for this. So it's you pick three and your buddy splits them up and picks one. I just, I don't know, that one, that one really appealed to me. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I gave Kirsty the choice of the twisted ones, the strange case of the alchemist's daughter and maybe either the caretakers or burner bodies. I don't really remember. It was a long time ago when we planned this. But thankfully Kirsty obliged me with yet another haunted house book because that's all I want to read this month apparently. Like it really is. It really kind of is. Like I'm not actually joking that much. I just want to read haunted house novels. Look I have a weird form of self-care okay. There's tea and there's bath bombs and then there's creepy haunted house books where nobody gets out alive. Well, few people I'll allow some survivors. Anyway, Kirsty picked for me the twisted ones. And not only is this a haunted house novel but it has one of my weird niche areas of interest in it which is the compulsion to hoard things. I've told you guys before but my grandmother is somebody who genuinely hoards things and my mother has taken that clutter tendency to a different kind of level and it took me a really long time to break myself of the habit of needing to keep everything, all of the things that come into my house, which is one of the reasons that I really enjoy unhauling books now because I have learned the joy of actually decluttering my space and so I'm really fascinated reading about it in memoirs and in fiction. So this one checks that box. This is about Mouse whose dad asks her to please clean out her grandmother's house when her grandmother passes away and Mouse is like sure why not it can't be that bad can it and then she discovers it can because her grandmother was a hoarder and her entire house is filled with what Mouse sees as junk. But during the excavation of all of this layers of years in her grandmother's house, she finds her step-grandfather's journal, which seems to be filled with weird rambles about things that he has seen in the house. She dismisses it out of hand because it doesn't seem like anything that could exist in reality until one day in a corner of the house, she 
encounters one of those things. The only thing that I'm a little bit trepidatious about in this one is that it does mention at the end of the blurb that Mouse finds herself alone in the woods, which is where her grandmother's house is, with her dog. And I am not a fan of horror novels or horror movies which have anything bad happening to the animals. I know I'm quite happy for many bad things to happen to the people, but the animals need to be left alone and be okay. So we'll see. The jury is out on that part. Next up we have Vengeful Spirit, a revenge plot and I really struggled with this one at first. I was only looking at sort of straight up horror novels like you know haunted house novels and things but Elena did state in her video where she announced the book Buddyathon, which of course I will have linked down below, that you don't just have to read straight up horror. You can read creepy things too, kind of sinister things. And so I ended up deciding on When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole, which has one foot in horror and one foot in thriller and is a conspiracy plot. This one is about Sydney who was born and raised in her beloved neighbourhood in Brooklyn. She knows everything about it, the history of the place and the people, but to her abject distress more and more for sale signs are popping up all around the area. It seems to be an epidemic. Uh -huh. Um, of for sale signs and so she decides to try and preserve some of the history of her neighbourhood and she starts up a walking tour to show tourists around how it used to be. But very soon Sydney and her assistant Theo start dipping into some historical documents and they discover that actually not all is entirely as it seems when it comes to the for sale signs as in people might not be leaving entirely of their own volition. Sounds right up my street and it also helps that I have this one on audiobook. So I've tried to make this TBR a kind of combination of audiobooks, physical books and Kindle books so that I'm reading from a little bit of everywhere and I can maybe have two on the go together. So this month is not my traditional stack it where I would normally like put them all in a stack and then have to read them in order and if I skipped one I would have to you know unhaul it. It's not quite that but we're getting there again. Bear with me. Next up is Abandoned House. The prompt for this one was simply standalone and so I picked can you guess? You're right! I picked another haunted house book because of course I did. This is The Family Plot by Sherry Priest. This has been on my TBR for a really really long time and I am desperately excited to get to it. In The Family Plot we follow Chuck Dutton who owns a company called Music City Salvage. It essentially takes old abandoned properties and it completely refurbishes them and sells them on for a fairly big profit I would assume. One one day a woman called Agatha Winthrow walks into Chuck's offices and says I would like to sell my big old family house, you can have it for this very very terrifically low price. Like a scarily low, a, a, you really should have thought about this more low price. But Chuck just sees dollar signs, he shakes on it, he takes it. Enter Dahlia, whose job it is to oversee this project. Dahlia takes a couple of trucks down and she discovers there's a few things that Augusta Withrow left out of the deal. She didn't mention that there's actually also a barn on the property and also a carriage house and a cemetery. There is a cemetery on the property. And while weird, Dahlia doesn't think much more about this. It's a decently in good shape house for somewhere that's been condemned. And then things start to happen, which is my favourite tagline at the end of any horror book, until bad things start to happen. I am very very pleased with my choice to purchase this book. Next up is the only other prompt that I really kind of struggled with on this one. It's Death by Sex which is an interesting horror trope that I don't think I've actually seen that often. And the prompt is to read a dark romance. I don't read a lot of romance anyway and when I do it's almost entirely contemporary romance and so I ended up having to find a kind of gothic romance come 
question mark question mark creepy thing novel and for that I picked Tangerine by Kristen Mangan. This is about Alice Shipley. She has abandoned her entire life when she moved with her husband to Tangiers but she's quite happy with that because she does not want to remember any of the things that happened back home. And Alice really did leave everything at home including all of her friends none of whom she keeps in contact with anymore and so the last person that she expects to see when she rocks up in Tangiers is her best friend Lucy. They haven't spoken in over a year but there Lucy is right there waiting to welcome her and apparently show her around this brand new world of hers. Alice is quite a wallflower and she's terrified of Tangiers. She hasn't assimilated into the culture. She's scared of the market. She's scared of going out alone. And Lucy is pretty fearless, so she should be happy that Lucy is miraculously there, right? But soon Alice feels like she can't make a single choice without Lucy's interference. And then Alice's husband goes missing and oh so many things start to make a terrifying sort of sense. Very much along the lines of Rebecca and the more recently released Mexican Gothic, this one is set in the 50s and it has that very sort of when the world used to be a simpler place except maybe not vibe and I'm very very there for it. Next up we have are they dead yet? <laughs> I love this prompt because it's a book over 400 pages, which I agree in a lot of instances, 400 pages is more than enough. Are they dead yet? For this one, I have picked Bliss House by Laura Benedict. Now, before I give you the plot of this, I will say if you do click on the Goodreads link below and go and look at it, this one does say that it's actually book two in the Bliss House series. But this was chronologically the first one that was written and then we go back to 1878 when Bliss House was built. Because this is, as you guessed it folks, yet another haunted house novel. I'm not sorry. Bliss House is about Rainy Adams. Her entire life has fallen apart when her husband was tragically killed in an accident which left her daughter very badly disabled. She has decided to relocate to go somewhere where no one knows them and attempt to try to piece their lives back together and so she goes to her namesake. Rainy's middle name is Bliss and this old house, Bliss House, is a house that has been in her family for a very long time and Rainy just thinks that it's going to be the kind of place that's just going to wrap them up and cocoon them from the world except mm, that's kind of exactly what Bliss House does except not in a way that she expected. Next up we have Mirror Scare which actually is one of my least favourite things in any horror movie ever and I may or may not have my makeup mirror next to me that I'm just I'm, I'm gonna I'm just gonna put it I'm gonna put it away in the drawer. It's in the drawer now. It's gone. I don't wanna no that. This prompt Mirror Scare is to buddy read a book. I really I just I love the prompts for this readathon. They have completely tickled me this year. The book that the lovely Kirsty and I decided to buddy read was The Enemy by Charlie Higson. This is the first in a completed seven book young adult series and it is most definitely post-apocalyptic. So I'm going to tell you right now that if you're not feeling uh, in the space where you can enjoy hearing about books which include a post-apocalyptic future and also zombies then maybe this book is not for you right now and I would like skip ahead until you see it go away. But for those of you who stuck around and who are like me in love with the first sort of like four seasons of The Walking Dead before it all went a bit off the rails, this is very much the book for you. So this is about a group of teenagers in London who are essentially camped out in a local Waitrose supermarket. An event which we aren't told very much about in this novel but I do believe becomes more and more explained in the future novels in the series has happened which has killed off all of the adults 
in their known world because all of the technology has also come to a stop because nobody's actually you know working in power plants and things like that anymore so the kids don't really know if there's anybody alive outside of London but inside of London the adults that didn't die turned into something else so yes it's kind of also a zombie novel except the disease that has swept through the adults isn't your typical zombie disease. And so at the beginning of this novel we follow a group of kids who are waiting in the waitrose for a scavenging party to come back and we follow the kids who have gone out on the scavenging party and the one thing that Kirsty said to me about this novel was don't get attached to anybody, just don't, don't get attached to anybody and um she was right <laughs> and last but definitely not least we have found footage your buddy picks a book from your wish list or your tbr and i was not shocked at all when kirsty picked this one the name of which i'm going to read because i have never ever managed to say it first time on camera so i'm not even going to bother trying it is the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires by grady hendrix this one is about patricia campbell who is a middle-aged woman which i'm very very pleased about because you know urban fantasy books are just never written about middle-aged women they're just apparently they don't exist they don't exist anywhere or they exist just to be nommed on and killed and you know abandoned so I'm very pleased about that Patricia has a husband who works an awful lot and kids who are teenagers and who don't really want much to do with her at this point in their life and she is trying to find some sort of meaning so she starts going to a book club and on her way back from one of these book club meetings she is attacked by a neighbour. It is a completely freak attack, her nice little old neighbour has never done anything like this before and it is her neighbour's nephew who comes to the rescue. James Harris is very handsome and he is very interested in Patricia and she is feeling very uninteresting at this point in her life and so she allows him in but the closer and closer she gets to him the more and more she realizes that actually maybe he is not what he seems actually maybe he has something to do with the fang marks on the cover that's all I'm gonna say and I'm very very excited this one has been described to me as the setting of fried green tomatoes, the cast of steel magnolias and the twists and turns of Buffy and yes is all I'm saying. So that's it, that is everything that is on my book buddy a -thon TBR. It's jam packed with things that I'm desperate to read, some things that I've been wanting to read forever and some brand new things to me and so I'm so hoping that I just fly through it, especially because I'm just allowing myself to pick up books as I want to. So it's kind of like a stack it but it's also kind of not a stack it at the same time. Please do let me know if you guys have read any of these books or if based on any of these books there are any other haunted house or creepy horror novels that you would like me to read because I am more than open to your recommendation. And of course, if you're taking part in Book Buddyathon, please do link me to your TBRs so that I can see the deliciously devious things that you will be picking up this month. I will speak to you guys soon when I will be back with my tops and bottoms from September. Bye!